All right, we're back. Put away a few tools, get stuff out of my way, so I got room to work. Okay, so we got our push rods down here. We have not put the corks up here yet in the motor. So before I forget, let's get those up in there. Wouldn't be the first time I've done that. So get them pushed up in there nice and flat and even, obviously. So you push them up with your finger, like this, all the way around your fingernail. Get them up in there evenly. Okay, they're in there pretty good now. You can also take the cover and just shove it up in there too to do the same thing. But not always as good. Okay, so now we got to figure out where our, uh, which cylinder we're going to adjust first and make our adjustment. I got a turning tool right here I use. It's over here under the crank and you can rotate it backwards. Now if the heads, if the piston hit the heads right now you got a problem, so give it a couple revolutions. As long as you rotate the motor backwards, the oil I put in the crank will stay in the crank. When I start it, it lubricate, lubricates everything. If I start going forward with it, it'll, it'll go in the breather system. Okay, looks good. Okay, we gotta do the valves at top dead center. I adjust both valves. Now, right now we have top dead center as both both pistons are gonna have compression stroke right now because there's no valves in the damn thing. Every time the piston comes up, you're gonna be on compression stroke. So you start blowing air and suck air. And first it sucks, then it blows. See? When it quits blowing, you're close. You take a Phillips screwdriver. Laying in a cylinder like that, you can tell if you're right out there or not. Okay, there's top dead center right there. If you put the screwdriver in there like that, guess what happens to it? It bends it. If you have a flat blade on it, it pops the tip off. It's inside your motor. Phillips sees you don't break the tips off, but they will bend. So remember, don't lay it in there like that. Hold the thing straight up and down as close as you can, and it'll go up and down nice and evenly. So we're on top dead center right now, but are we on the firing stroke or the overlap stroke? If you put the valves and adjust them there, it's the wrong one. You got about an eighth of an inch of free play when you get to the other stroke. Because the valves are all open about an eighth of an inch right now, or better. So, <clears throat> the way you find out where you're at, you have to come over here and look at the lifters. Now, right off the bat, I can tell uh, which one we're at. These are both equally in their way down. We're on the compression stroke on that hole, but. Nope, maybe not. See, that one just pushed way down, so nope, now we're lower. Okay, see how low these are on the bore? See how these are a lot higher? These are on the overlap stroke. This is on the compression stroke. You just tell by the height of the lifter where you're at. See how these are a lot higher up? That means they're open. These ones are both down. Okay, but that's not how I check them. You can eyeball it and guess them it and say that's probably what it is right now. But in the real world, I don't care. What I want to know is which valves are moving right now. My guess is these two valves right here are going to move as soon as I move this wrench. So, I move this wrench just a little bit. Watch these move. This intake, this one's going up right now. See now it's dropping. Now this intake is going up right now. Oh, I'm going backwards, excuse me. Here's the intake's opening now. It closes. The exhaust is coming up right now, which is this one. See it's all the way up. Now when it goes down, now you're going to be on compression stroke because the valves are both closed right now. So when you do that, you'll be top dead center over here, will be your compression stroke. Boom. There's the valve coming up. There's your top dead center. Adjust the valves on that one. Now on this generator motor, it's hard to adjust the front one, so I'm going to do it first. 
that way I don't have these in my way when I'm trying to adjust these because the stripper gets in the way on this one. So it's the same trick. Now if I'm, if I'm turning the motor in the normal direction, it's when the intake valve closes. But in this case, I'm running the motor backwards, so everything's backwards. So this one here, we're on overlap right now, which means the intake should be closing right now. It looks like it already did. Exhaust is closing right now. So now we're coming up on TD on this one over here. And right there is top center. Okay, so both of these are now all the way down. And if we want to know for sure where it's at, we to look at the lifters again. Remember how these were all the way down before? And these were up higher. You notice how these are up higher, and these are both all down again. So we're on compression stroke for this hole right now. But I always like double checking by the stick method, which means put something in the hole and watch the damn valves move up and down. Or the lifters in this case. Now if you have valves in here already, push rods in here already when you do it, you'll actually have compression only once up. Because it'll be on the overlap, you don't have any compression. But without any valves in there, you have compression. Each time that piston comes up on either hole, it's got compression. Okay, so we're going to do the intake first. Now the intakes are the inside, the exhaust are the outside. If you don't know what that is, look at the parts over here. They line up with each other. So remember the intake push rods are shorter than the exhaust. Couple hundred thousand difference here. I already got the intakes up all the way, so I know for sure which ones are which. So now this just goes in a hole here, and you adjust it up and down, you're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna now. I think these are 18 flats on these push rods, but let me pull out the instructions and read them. You'll know for sure. If not, I'm gonna make them 18 flats, which is three full turns. In case you don't know what a flat is, a flat is each one hex is a flat. Now if you have a square nut, it's four times around. This is a hex because it's got six points on it. So one flat, you go one, 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 one like that. If you do six flats, that's one full turn. Eighteen flats divided by six is how many? That's three full turns. If you went to school. Now, if you didn't go to school, you got problems. Okay, this is a bunch of crap I could give squat about. I don't care about all that. I don't care about any of that junk. Okay, this doesn't talk at all about push rod flats. That figures. Dumbasses don't want to tell you anything. This shows you what the lifters look like apart. So, the limiter has a limiter right here in it, which is normally what comes in the shovel head kit. But I take the limiter out. I don't want this kit my damn shovel head. I want unlimited lifters. So I took the I put I bought lifters that did not have the limiters in it. Now limiters are different how you adjust them. You have to adjust them until they're fully down, which is only about a turn, turn and a half max. You wait until everything's bled, and then you unscrew it until you can just move the push rod. Not forcing it, but just freely. And then you go up one or two flats. And then you leave it there. Which works out to be in about four flats down roughly so me I cheat I just go down four flats but that's not really how I like having stuff that's for racing applications now they might be doing it because Harleys have horrible oil pumps on old bikes and maybe that's the way of keeping the bleeders the lifters from having a problem I don't know that might be the excuse for it but everybody wants to adjust the valve remembers it's 18 flats and that's how they do it so when you start doing these different ways it gets confusing so until proven otherwise, I'm going to do it my way. Okay, this is not telling me a damn thing about how much push rod adjustment there is. Let me talk about HTL, HDL limiters, installation, yeah, 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 whatever, a bunch of crap. Crap, 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 crap. Got a lot of crap in here. Adjust push rods. Note, do not do this yourself. Yeah, screw you. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Lifter bodies, oh yeah, whatever. 20, 30 minutes for pistons, yeah, screw you. 20 minutes for that, I'm not leaving my valve for 20 minutes waiting for it to bleed. There we go, six flats, okay. There's what you gotta read right here. So, flats, what, shorten? Wow, that's what they're talking about, shortening. 
Shorten the adjustable in uh, adjustable six flats at one full turn from zero lash results in quieter valve train. What the hell are you talking about? So they're telling me just to turn it in one flat, one turn, and leave it. Yeah, whatever. Nobody does it that way. Oh, they're completely bottoming out the lifter and then come back and up six flats. That's what they're doing. The lifter has like four full turns of adjustment in it. So guess what? One from four is three. That's why I'm putting them as three. All right, so this is not really telling me how I want to do it. That's too technical. Screw them. Real simple. If you got 32 threads per inch push rods, it's 18 flats. See those threads right there? There's 32 threads per inch there. Guess what you guess what the adjustment's gonna be. They're making it confusing. If you go really read the Jim's instruction sheet, it gives you all the dimensions on that. At least it used to. For every different style push rod out there, it tells you what the adjustment is. SNS won't tell you that. It's top secret information. Okay, don't forget to put the push rod cover on there. I put oil in both tips right now. Slip her up in the hole. Drop down. And you can start adjusting it down. Zero. Zero means there's no up and down in it. Now I might be able to compress it. Yes, a little bit. I go down about about that much. Can you see the up and down movement? Before the hydraulic <coughs> locks up. See so you can press the lifter down. Now if you look on the snap ring on top of the lifter there, you can see movement as it goes up and down. From over here you can see my fingers move. It goes up and down. So anyway, your pistons have some movement. Basically, you want the piston to be below that clip about a hundred thousandths. Eighty to a hundred thousandths about what you have them at. Lots of different ways of adjusting these things. Okay. All right, oh, I got one left. I'm running out of my wood ones. I hear all they make is plastic anymore. Okay, I put those on there to hold it. It gets it out of my way. Okay, now, this is a quarter inch wrench. That's a square. I don't count in squares, I count in, in hex. If you want to use squares, it's a different one. Okay, this is the 7 16 which is up here. So, you go to zero, which is right there. And then I go my flats up here start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm getting tight now. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and an extra one. I do an extra one because when I tighten them up, you lose one or part of one. Okay, this is seven sixteenths. Gem nutted. So, see it moved one. Okay, now if you go like this here, you just squeeze your fingers together, and it'll tighten it up. And you put a lot of torque on it because there's no. <clears throat> what I don't like about SNS, there's no nothing to keep this nut tight except pressure. It's flat on both sides. The Harley ones are tapered and split, so when you tighten them up, that jams in tart and tight, and they stay that way. It'd be nice if SNS made them that way, but nobody seems to do that because it's too much work. Okay, so that one's that tightened all the way down. So I'm going to wait for it to bleed off, and then we should go see it. Now, if you look down that snap ring down there, it should have about 100 thou compression in there. I don't know if you can tell from the, here how much is down there. I'll have to look on a big screen TV, or at least on my computer screen, I can see. But it should be about 80 thou down right now. Now, once the thing bleeds, it'll... Everything at the valve will close. The, the piston will actually drop down lower. So right now it might not be down that deep, but it will be eventually. 
Whatever you do, do not turn the motor over until you can turn this with your hand. I don't mean forcing, I mean just turning it. Okay, so that one we're waiting for. Okay, now this is an exhaust. Double check the length to make sure it's longer. It is. That's longer because it takes more distance when it's at an angle this way than straight up and down. It takes more. I'm going to do it. Okay, so we're going to loosen this all the way up. Let's see how far I go. Yeah, we got to go up further. There we go. Yep, still got to go all the way. So yeah. All right. Put a little bit of oil on the tips here. Get your cover again. Stick it up in the hole. Drop it down. I thought the oil I just made a mess with. You now I hold the both nuts right here together so when I unscrew it, it the push rod, the adjuster screw just drops them. And they both go together so I don't have to fight it. Except right there it got tight. <laughs> Why the hell did that get tight? It's going good and all of a sudden it just locked up. Okay, you keep wiggling the push rod back and forth until you figure it, feel it dropping into the ball down there. Make it a little bit closer, you might go see better. So right now it wiggles all over the place. You want to make sure you're down inside the lifter. See it's still moving. You see now it doesn't move so much? It's in the ball socket now. Okay, that's zero right there. Still waiting for that one to bleed. Okay. I'll hold that one. Tighten this one up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Same spot, I got about eight, eight to nine flats down. They got tight, that's about a turn and a quarter. That's right where limiters lock up. But these should be unlimited lifters as I recall. Pretty sure I put unlimited ones in here. I know I bought them that way. You never know, maybe they just sent me limited ones. Like you put the nuts like this, you can squeeze, you don't have to push them apart or something stupid. And this is a Mac tool, extra thick wrench, so I can really pull hard on them. I put a lot of torque on those. There he goes. This one's bled down now. So it's definitely an unlimited set. See how they move now? So when they Pull back a little bit, might help. So it looks like they turn nice and freely. Okay, so now that's how deep the push plunger is below the clip. You can see in there that's where the height is. This one here is still bleeding, so it's higher up right now. This, one, this one's not bleeding anymore, so it drops down. Okay, I'm going to refocus there. Okay, this one's starting to loosen up already. We also got to make sure this thing is still up in the ball socket up here in the rocker arm too. I've had them where they go poop and pop in. That means you're a dumbass, didn't do it right. Okay, these are, this still has a little bit of drag on it. Oh, it's, it's getting there. <coughs> so it's close. Okay, it's close enough to turn the motor over. It'll continue bleeding. Almost there. Got about another flat worth of bleeding to go. Okay, so now when you turn the motor over, these are actually go up and down now if you look at them as I turn the motor over. So when you watch these here go up and down, if I put a clip on, you'll see it a little easier. The intake will go up first. See how the clip's going up. 
cover there. Okay, I'm going to be on top dead center on this one here. Piston's coming up on my side right now. I'm all the way up. So you can see how the, they're over, both these valves are moving up and down. You're on the overlap stroke. And these are both open a little bit. Like I said, if we adjusted them on that, the amount that this thing's in the air is how much too loose the bit be. So if your motor really knocks loud when you start it up, it might not be that there's a lack of oil pressure, it might be a lack of adjustments. Dumbass didn't adjust it right. Okay, so I just push those two lifters down. So now you can see that they're down the bore pretty far down like the front ones were when they're in the correct spot. So there you go. Alright, so once again we're going to do the intake first. It's easier to do than exhaust unless you want to work around one of them. I don't particularly want to be that way. Okay, short one is the intake. Oop, so I can see it's shorter. Plus this one already got adjusted down. Grab another cover. Okay. Same deal, we'll just adjust the screw down. Can't really show you what I'm doing because my hand's in the way, but we're adjusting the screw down. You notice the screw's getting lower. At some point, we'll have threads coming out over here. That's some bad threads there for a second. Some burrs on the first one, I guess. Okay, we're just now getting in the ball socket. At this point, you make sure it's in the ball socket on the top also. You go down to you at zero. Right there is zero. And same adjustment. Pretty straightforward how this is done. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, I missed a couple. Ten, damn it. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I think I missed one. There's a little extra. Now, if you notice that one, it pl the plunger went down all the way. It was easy to adjust. I wasn't struggling as much. Okay. Okay, get the wrench where you can squeeze on them. Initially tighten and squeeze the piss out. Make sure you're pushing the wrenches in, otherwise they spread and fall out. Okay, this one should turn already. Yeah. See, this one here is already loose. See, I can already turn it. Yeah, so see, both these have tension. Now, this one's closed, so this one still turns. This one's open a little bit, so it's tight. Okay, and this is a long one, so we, we know where it goes. See, the hydraulics collapse easily. It's quicker, see. You have to wait. Sometimes you gotta wait a day for them to bleed. Easy if it doesn't bleed, but the next day I come back, I take the lifter apart and get the oil out of it and do it again. That's rare, but it does happen. Easy to bleed down within a few minutes. If it's more than a half hour, more likely it won't bleed. Okay, so here's where it drops down to. Blow this up again. So I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the center down. Like I said, I'm holding the nut up here. So it's going to go through the push rod and nut at the same time as the adjuster goes into it. So the plunger's going out, the adjuster's dropping down here. Okay, we're getting in the ball socket, but we're still pretty loose yet. Another turn down, we'll get more in the ball. Okay, that just dropped out over there. Make sure it's in. Okay, now we're getting close. Jiggle it, jiggle it. And go up one more flat and it's there. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. Okay. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. This one's tight. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. So that one was tight. Oh, wrong side. In there. That one's not going to turn for a while. This one's already loose here. We're good. Okay, so we're going to wait a little bit for this one to bleed a little bit. Go ahead and do our final adjustment. Okay, now this here is tight or loose. This is loose. So that easy means I didn't adjust something. I thought I adjusted the timing on this motor. So. Easy after I adjust it and tighten this up all the way. So this being not tight, that means it might not be adjusted. Let's go look at a video and see. I don't remember. That there's a way of checking it relatively easily. Once this thing adjusts, anyway. Let's see. Nope, still solid as a rock. Okay, so we're going to have to take this cover back off to check the timing. Okay, still can't turn the motor over because that's tight. Kind of limits what I can do until it's loose. Okay, let's see here. What else do I got doing this thing? I got these are all tight. I think checking the time is about the last last thing to do. And you want to retorque your base nuts and head bolts. Well, base nuts do it after you start the bike up twice. And then the head bolts, as you torque them after I put my 5, 10 miles on it, then I'll check them. And then uh, these might loosen up twice in that time frame. So easy to do it. Like after you do a couple of heat cycles, you do it once, you tighten them, check them. And then after you get your mileage on the motor, you check the head bolts and the base nuts and readjust the valves if it's a mechanical cam bike. You've already done it a couple times. With the hydraulics, I usually don't check the valves again. Usually you don't have to. But if you want to, you can do it after you do the break in, which is three to 500 miles. And then it should be good to go for pretty much the life of the motor, unless there's a problem. And check your head bolts again after you, you know, put a thousand or two thousand miles on it. Probably a couple thousand miles. You can check them again, base nuts too. And after that, it should be good to go. You can check them every oil change. It doesn't hurt to go over your motor when you're checking stuff. Check your rocker boxes, head bolts, base nuts. Just throw a wrench on stuff. If it moves, it's loose. It's pretty simple. You know, when you change your oil, that's pretty much when you check all this stuff. Okay. okay, that's, that's enough. I can work with it now. It's moving. Okay, so now I can turn my motor over. All right, so I need to find out where I am on my over here in the timing. So this is an automatic advance, which means it has to be able to rotate forward here a little bit. So this cam moves back and forth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the motor forward direction, which I don't really want to do, but if I run slow, it'll be all right. And I'll bring this up around a compression stroke and then a timing mark, which is not top dead center. Okay, I'll take this plug out so I can see in here. Okay, reverse this here. So some people I know who makes this, these guys make it. I think they still make them. I know they're out there, there might be a different name on them, but they're out there still. Okay, so now you can put your finger over the whole field for compression. And we're also turning the motor over the valves to work on this time, so you want to listen for any kind of binding or popping noise. That's bad. Got compression here. Okay, where are we at? Top center. Okay, we're coming up, so now we got to start looking over here on a flower mark. There's our line right there. So there's a line right there. See it? it? says front on it. 
So if the distributor is timed, it should be just about opening the point up here pretty soon. Points are just moving a little bit. I'm not hitting my finger. See, they're just bouncing a little bit. You know, if I put a light on this or an indicator, you would see it. An old meter. Because I timed it for advance, which is the back of the hole. Now the stock position is in the middle, right there. If you go to the back, it's advanced. The four is retarded. So right now, retarded about one degree, maybe. So right now, the point should definitely be opening right now. See how they open up a little bit. So this bike, the uh, ignition has been timed like I thought it was. So that's how you double check. It's just it's a quick reference. Doesn't take much to do this. Okay, so right now we're on firing stroke. We're on the compression stroke. We're at the firing point right now where it fires. So you know that's where we're at. So I'm going to tighten this up now because I know it's done. Why I didn't do that before. But that's all right. Okay. That's enough torque. Okay, we got some spark flows in here now. Sparking plugs. And I gotta put the lid back over here before I forget also. Get back over here. Doesn't hurt to get all this stuff done right now before you forget. Okay, we're using NGK spark plugs. Uh, B is 14 millimeter. R is resistor because it's got like uh, no no R. A P is extended tip. If it had an R on here, it'd be for resistor ignition, which we do not use with points. That's for electronic. Uh, five is the heat range. E is uh, I forget what the fuck. E. Oh, E is the length, three quarter. And then S means it's a copper core, which they all are in spoil. They're all that way on these things. That's a normal number for GK. So it's 14, three quarter law, number five heat range, and it's non resistor. If there's any kind of an R on a number, it's a resistor plug on just about every plug out there. You do not run resistor spark plugs or wires on point ignition. They will run like crap and burn up the condensers. Okay, I put a little bit of uh, Never Seize on here. So do not put it on the tip. It will not run again if you do. It will never run. You don't need much on there, just a little bit. So I usually put a little bit on both sides, like that. That's enough. Oh, I didn't check the down gap. Yeah, maybe get ahead of myself. Okay, we use uh, 18 or 28 thousandths on these old crappy motors. So this is at 35. So it's a little bit too much. So you bang it against the table down here. That closes it up a little bit. Hit it harder. Okay, we're about 30. A little bit harder. There we go. We're about 27, 28. That's a good number. Okay, so that's adjusted now. So now I can put this weapon in the cylinder. Run it on down. 
my spark plug socket. This one I can put a wrench on it. So I like to compress the uh, thing all the way down, back it off, and come back on it again. And I'll guarantee you that'll be loose after you run a few miles. So readjust it. I collapse that seal all the way down. I totally collapse that thing. Always do. Probably not supposed to, but yeah, whatever. There's a lot of stuff you're not supposed to do. I hear riding motorcycles dangerous too. I didn't listen to anybody on that one either. I also heard that Harley's are piles of crap. Well, that's true. I'm still going to ride them though. Okay, there's our gap, 28. A little bit on there. Flip it around 180, get a little bit over there. Like I said, we coated the thread, but we don't. It's not a big layer of it in there. We just painted some on there. We're going to do it on this one. And we'll probably be taking these back out again to check all the clutch and stuff. But eh, for now, we're just going to put these in there. I don't like having an open motor. So if we, if we know it's all together, we know it's, it's together. Okay. Okay, that's collapsed. Pack it off. Put a little torque on it. We're good. All right, so those are all in there. So all of this stuff is tight now. So the last thing we got to do is put the push rod covers on there. We already turned them over a few times. We know it didn't hit, so that's a good plus. Okay, where's the clips at? Oh, that's right. This is a different motor than stock. We can't use a stock clip. I forgot about that. Okay, so push the bottom cover all the way down, push the upper all the way up, make sure it pops up in there. These are the stock length ones. These are not supposed to work. See how they're too long? Yep, can't get them in there. See how leverage them in like trying to put a shoe on, so. Not a bad angle to videotape and do this together. See, you can't get it in there. It's a couple hundred thousand too far. See, these are too long because you got these conversion blocks and they're taller than stock. So I have to get different covers. Which is not a problem. I have some covers for this. Let that one drop back down. I don't like me. Okay, so these are too damn long. We need the correct covers. Where are they at here? Thought I had some out here already. Here they do not have them. Alright, so the covers that come with the SNS are 2.8 inches long, which basically means there's no compression on these things. They will fall out. 3 inches is the magic number. So, I just happen to have some 3 inch ones right here. Colony made these for some special application. Don't know what the hell it was, but they're not available. I haven't tried to get them made from Colony yet, but they made them for somebody. Probably some stupid motor was made that they don't make anymore. But I don't care. I have a bunch of these I bought, so I got what I need. So these are supposed to be three inches long. We will find out in a minute. What I like about these is they look like a Harley cover and they don't look like a stupid SNS cover with a clip on the end of it. There we go. I don't care about the rest of that junk. Okay, wipe the tape off of these. Pre-scratched. There's that tape. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's tape. Like I said, the SNS ones are just, they, they're just plain top and bottom. They got a little notch in the bottom here. 
I don't like them. I like the stock clip ones. It makes them look correctly. That's how Harley's are supposed to look. They're not supposed to look like them fancy ass solid cover ones you got. <clears throat> okay, so these should be three inches long. And look at that, three inches long. Get back up here to know where it is. So these are three inches. The stock Harley ones are, I think, like 3.4, 3 and 3 a, something like that. And they're actually a little bit under that. 3.330. That's a weird number. Hmm. Yeah, about 30. 3330 is what I'm getting. See how bad I'm blind today. Oh, I was off by five. Three, three, five. Damn, it's hard to get good help. This one's three thirty around the money. That's the first one I measured. There you go. Thirty-five. Yeah, these are by five though. Yeah, there's these aftermarket ones here. These are seven thou over. That one's twelve over. That's a big one. So there you go. Okay, let's see if these fit. We know these Harley ones don't. Okay, so. These, yeah, I got tape on that one too. Look at that damn junk. Ugly. Sticky ass tape. Okay, the way these go is you, you slip them on a the cover, slide them up until they hit the club, make sure the base is in, make sure that's down. Okay, this is how much compression you got from here to here. So you got almost a half inch of compression on this clip. So you're gonna have good compression on it. So you just wedge this up here like that, pop it in, pull it out, boom, you're done. Clean up like that a little bit, and there you go, it's in there. So that's how you do these. Now, the clip that the SNS gives you is 200 thou less than this. So instead of having a real heavy Compression on this thing, you got almost nothing. So the clip can come right out. It's supposed to have tension on it. See how that popped up in there further, too? So this one right now, that's at three inches. So same deal, go over here, pull it. And make sure you rotate it. When you're rotating top and bottom as a pair. That centers up anything in here. If there's any kind of crap on the seals, it'll squeegee it out. And I do that for all covers, whether it's O-ring or push rod, it doesn't matter. Okay, this one here that came down, so you just got to get it up in there. Pop it up into the hole. If you're really strong, you can almost do that yourself, see? With the SNS one, you can do it really easy. Not these ones. Because these have the tension on them you're supposed to have. Rotate it in. That's good. There you go. See, that looks like a Harley. <clears throat> it's supposed to look. That's how I like them. All right, so we got everything on this motor now. Amazing. So this is ready to go into the stand now. So we're going to get this, uh, put this in the bike. And it's almost tomorrow. Oh, it is tomorrow. See that clock way over there? It's tomorrow now. See, right there? It's 12 o'clock. 12 on the dark side. Okay, I'm going to go uh, see about throwing this in the back here. My back isn't hurting enough yet for tonight, so I'm going to make it work a little harder. We'll be back.